Good day friends. Greetings to you from the Life Church Wiser in the life giving name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I praise God for this wonderful time and opportunity God has given to us to meditate upon his word. It is my prayer and wish that that this time can be a blessing to all of us. If you have your Bible turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. and we are going to meditate upon the first 11 verses from this chapter Isaiah 40 and first 11 verses and uh, from this chapter i'm going to talk to you about comfort in critical circumstances comfort in critical circumstances as we are going to meditate upon these 11 verses i want to draw four blessings that what god was going to bestow upon the people of joda in the land of babylon and we need to grab those blessings into our lives too today as we receive this word into our lives and first of all i want to read the first two verses from this uh, chapter and as we go on we can read the remaining verses the first two verses from the book of isaiah chapter 40 and the scripture reads like this comfort comfort my people says your god speak tenderly to jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed that her sin has been paid for that has that she has received from the lord's hand double for all her sins let's pray dear heavenly father we thank you lord for this blessed time you are giving to us thank you for the scripture lord bless this scripture and speak to every one of us through the scripture lord let this message that you are going to speak to us be a blessing and be an encouragement to all of us lord once again we beseech you to speak into our hearts and into our lives today we give all glory and honor to you in jesus name we pray amen friends the book of isaiah is a wonderful book and uh, the book of isaiah is called as a mini bible because the book of isaiah has uh, 66 chapters as the bible has uh, 66 books and if you look into the division of the bible and the book of isaiah the old testament has 39 books and the new testament has 27 and the book of isaiah is also divided like that the first 39 chapters speak about the retribution of god the judgment of god the punishment of god on the people of judah and the remain remaining 27 chapters from chapter 40 to 66 speak about the restoration by god the restoration that god was going to bring forth into the lives of uh, judah and so the book of jo the book of uh, isaiah is called as a mini bible bible within the bible now we are uh, meditating on the on a scripture from 40th chapter of the book of isaiah and that is the beginning portion of the second part of the book as i told you the first 39 chapters speak about uh, the retribution the judgment the punishment of god and, and now from chapter 40 the portion speaks about uh, the restoration that god was bringing forth into joda into the lives of joda so it was uh, the beginning of uh, 
God's restoration into the lives of uh, the people of Judah. As I told you, this message speaks about comfort in critical circumstances. The people of Judah were in the bondage of Babylon, in the captivity of Babylon for 70 long years. And after 70 years, God was going to deliver them from that uh, captivity. As they were in the land of Babylon, they were in captivity. They were under, they were under the strong hand of uh, the rulers of Babylon. They used to be looked down. They used to be treated as uh, the second rate, rated citizens uh, in the land of Babylon. It was a critical circumstance for the people of Judah. But now, God was going to deliver them from all such critical circumstances. So the first 11 verses speak about the cure of comfort that God is going to bring forth into their lives. The cure of comfort is coming into their lives. The time of turmoil is over. It's almost finished. And there is going to be a great comfort into their lives. The word comfort occurs 13 times in the second part of the book of Isaiah. That is from chapter 40 to 66. The word comfort occurs 13 times. So the entire portion speaks about comfort into the lives of the people of Judah. And it was going to be a new start, a new beginning into the lives of the people of Judah in the land of Babylon. And the scripture speaks, up, speaks like this. Proclaim to her, proclaim to Judah that her hard service has been completed. It was a proclamation into the, life of, into the lives of the people of Judah. A proclamation of care and comfort. And as we are going to meditate upon these 11 verses, uh, there are uh, four blessings of proclamation. And the first one is uh, found in the, in the first two verses. Uh, as we have read now, it was a proclamation of pardon into the lives of uh, the people of Judah. A proclamation of pardon. Because uh, the people of Judah in the land of Babylon were so sinful. They turned away from the ways of the Lord because uh, they never knew the Lord uh, being in the land of Judah. And we can understand uh, the people who were going to be delivered uh, from the land of Judah might be the second generation people. The second generation of the people who went into the captivity. So these people never, they, they, they had never seen the temple of God. They had never Enter the entered into the presence of God, and they had uh, never had that experience uh, in their lives, and so they became so sinful. If we look into the book of uh, Jeremiah, seventh chapter, we can understand uh, their sinful nature, the sinful nature of the people of Judah in the land of Babylon. If you look into the 7th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, verses 16 to 19, those verses speak about the idolatry of these people. Because they were in the land of Babylon, they turned to idolatry. And even when they were in, the land, in, the, in their own land, in, their, uh, uh, in, the, in the land of Judah, Time and again, they used to turn to idolatry. And now, God was uh, providing pardon. God was uh, giving them uh, a comfort, a message of comfort, uh, a proclamation of comfort, uh, of uh, pardon into, you, into their lives. Pardon with respect of idolatry in their lives. My friends, as God was speaking, uh, a wonderful message of blessing into their lives. We need to receive that blessing into our lives too today. And many times we are caught up with some sort of idolatry in our lives. We make idols of many things in our lives. We make money as an idol in our lives many times. We make power as an idol. 
we make our education as an idol we make our work as an idol we make uh, some people as idols in our lives and god is speaking to us today that uh, we need to come out of uh, such idolatry in our lives god wants to god wants to proclaim pardon from uh, such idolatry in our lives you need to you need to come forward to receive such pardon from uh, the presence of god you know though god wants to give such pardon into our lives unless you go forward to receive it into your life god cannot provide it to you god wants to give it to you but you need to be in a position to receive it you need to position yourself to receive such pardon into your life and the second sin we come across in the people of joda is found in the 7th chapter of jeremiah verses 5 and 6 it was a injustice among them among themselves it was not injustice that they were doing to some other people and we need to understand that they were in the land of babylon they were in a foreign land they cannot dare to do injustice to other people so they were they were doing injustice among themselves and god was speaking to those people to come out of such injustice and god wants to pardon them pertaining to their injustice and the third sin that we come across in the lives of the people of joda is found in the book of jeremiah 7th chapter again in verses 9 and 10 that is immorality he moralizes and immorality is uh, everywhere in every time and uh, if we look into our own lives we come across such immorality in our lives too and we need to come out of such immoralities in our lives god wants to provide pardon god was uh, proclaiming pardon to those people and uh, God is a God who can provide such pardon into our lives also if we want to come out of such immoralities in our lives immorality God was dealing with the immorality of those people and the fourth sin we find in the people of Judah was insensitivity to God's messengers time and again God sent his prophets to speak to them even when they were in the land of juda and even when they were uh, in the land of uh, babylon time and again god sent his uh, messengers god has sent his uh, servants to speak to them but they were so insensitive to the word of god they were not sensitive in their spirits many many times we are found like that my friends we are not sensitive to the spirit of god we are not sensitive to the word of god we are not sensitive to what god wants to speak to us and that was the spirit of those people of joda and this insensitivity to the messengers of god in the in the lives of the people of joda can be found in the book of jeremiah chapter 7 verses 25 and 26 and god was uh, tackling such sinful situations uh, in their lives and so god was proclaiming uh, his pardon into their lives that was the first blessing god was uh, imparting into their lives that was the first proclamation of blessing into their lives there was the first proclamation and that proclamation was uh, a proclamation of uh, pardon into their lives that was a great blessing into their lives my friend today god is speaking to you god wants to proclaim his pardon into your life too whatever idolatry you have in your life whatever injustice you have in your life whatever immorality you have in your life whatever insensitivity you have in your life god is speaking to you god wants to proclaim his pardon provide his pardon impart his pardon into your life god is a god of mercy god is a gracious god he wants to touch you with his pardon today if you want to receive such pardon come out of such sinful nature come out of uh, such sinful deeds uh, come out of uh, such sinful uh, things in your life god is a god of 
grace in your life. God wants to give you such grace by providing such pardon. God is proclaiming such pardon into your life today. Receive that pardon into your life and be blessed. And the second comforting proclamation and message was uh, it can be found in the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah verses 3 to 5. A voice of one calling in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level. The rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has uh, spoken. My friends, God was uh, bringing forth uh, another blessing into their lives. God was speaking uh, another message, another proclamation. It is uh, a proclamation of providence. A proclamation of uh, providence. My friends, yes, uh, God wanted to give them a care and comfort into their lives. God, went, God wanted to deliver them from that captivity. And uh, there was going to be a rough road ahead of them. There was going to be a very rough road ahead of them. You know, many times we pray for transformation. We pray for revival. We pray for change. And a change, a transformation and revivals are great things in our lives. But the period of transformation, the course of transformation sometimes gives us tough time. Here, God was about to give them a a, a, a state of transformation in their lives. As I told you, it was going to be a new beginning in their lives. And as I, at such time, God knew pretty well there was going to be a, a rough road that they were going to face. The deliverance from the captivity itself is a, is a, is a, is a, is a tough time for them. Because they had to leave all their belongings there. They had to leave their homes there. They had to leave all that they had in the land of Babylon and go to the land of Judah. It was a tough time for them. And the travel to Judah itself is a tough time. Yes, it was not an ordinary thing to travel from the Babylon, the land of Babylon to the land of Judah. And many people, they are afraid of travels. And uh, I don't know how many people held back in the land, uh, in the land of Babylon uh, thinking about uh, that rough travel. As God was uh, delivering them, uh, all these are uh, rough roads before them. And after going there, God... Uh, entrusted a responsibility to them that was uh, building the temple in the city of Jerusalem. That was not uh, an easy task. Getting resources to build the temple is one thing. And uh, facing the opposition of the people in the city of Jerusalem is another thing. There are a lot of challenges, my friends. Not only building the temple, but uh, building the walls uh, and raising uh, the gates uh, of, the, uh, of the city of Jerusalem. All these uh, things are uh, very, uh, they were very tough for them. It was not, it was not uh, an easy, easy task before uh, those people at the time. It was a rough, rough road ahead of them. That's why God was uh, encouraging them. And God was speaking about uh, His providence. My friends, uh, if, we, he, if, we, if, we, if we hear the voice of the Lord, uh, if we receive uh, His proclamation into our hearts, uh, and if we move on according to His uh, voice, uh, God is a God who provides to us. He was talking about uh, His providence. That was a wonderful, wonderful blessing into the lives of these people. 
that's why yes god was delivering those people from the land of babylon god spoke to those people in the book of zechariah chapter 4 6 and 7 the scripture god was speaking to those people this is the word of the lord to zerubbabel not by might not by power but my spirit says the lord of hosts who are you o great mountain before zerubbabel you shall become a plain and he shall bring forth the the capstone with shouts of grace grace to it oh what's a what a wonderful scripture it was god was a god was a imparting encouragement into their lives god was imparting courage into their lives god was a speaking about his providence of course the road was rough of course there was a it was a tough time for the children for the for the people of juda even then god was uh, speaking to the people my providence will be with you i will give my providence it was a proclamation of uh, providence my friends that was the second blessing the first one is proclamation of pardon the second one is proclamation of uh, providence If we look into 6 and 7 verses of the key scripture 6 and 7 verses of the key scripture these verses speak about another blessing a voice says cry out and i said what shall i cry all people are like grass and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field the grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the lord blows on them surely the people are grass the grass withers and the flowers fall but the word of our god endures forever praise the lord the word of the lord endures forever the third blessing was a message or a proclamation of promise god was giving a wonderful promise to these people a pardon a providence and a promise wonderful promise you know god was uh, these people were afraid of uh, the babylonians these people were afraid of uh, the rulers uh, in the babylon but god was uh, speaking about such people they were like grass god spoke to those people those people were like uh, grass and uh, all their faithfulness is like uh, the flowers of the field the grass withers and the flowers fall those people were like that you don't need to be afraid of those people because uh, they were like uh, they are like grass they are like uh, flowers that fall by the evening my friends what a wonderful wow what a wonderful state of promise uh, god was placing before them and that's why finally god says uh, the word of our god endures forever yes God's word God's promises uh, endures uh, God's promises uh, endure forever if you look into Psalm 37 the first two verses do not fret because of evil doers nor be envious of the workers of iniquity for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb you see these people were afraid of uh, those Babylonians the rulers of babylon the people of babylon the evil doings of the babylon but god was speaking to those people they were like grass which withers away and they were like flowers which falls to the ground by the evening but one thing stands forever that is the word of god god was promising them such a wonderful state of life and if you look into the first book of peter first peter book of peter chapter 1 verse 24 and 25 the scripture reads like this all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass the grass withers and its flowers you know its flower falls away but the word of word of the lord endures forever now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you what we read in the book of isaiah 
the same word is being repeated by peter here yes the word of the lord endures forever and the promises of the lord endure forever because uh, those are the promises of god it is he that gave this uh, those promises and the one who gave those promises uh, is a faithful one we need to we need to we need to we need to rely on his faithfulness we need to lean on his faithfulness our god is a god who cannot lie and he is a god who is so faithful to us god is speaking to those people all flesh is uh, grass all flesh is grass and god might have been speaking about those people who took them into captivity god might have been speaking about assyria the assyrians uh, took israelites uh, into captivity all such uh, assyrians uh, were like grass before the sight of god and the babylonians uh, who took uh, jordan into captivity and all all babylonians uh, were being seen as grass in the sight of god my friend whatever situation that stands against you the people that stand against you are looked as grass in the sight of god it withers away and they are looked as uh, they are they are they, they, they are seen and considered as uh, flowers uh, that fall to the ground by the evening and god says my word and my promise endures forever for your blessing that's a wonderful wonderful promise god god gives us my friends the proclamation of a promise finally another blessing can be seen in 9 to 11 verses of our key scripture isaiah 40 9 to 11 you who bring good news to zion go up on a high mountain you who bring good news to jerusalem lift up your voice with a shout lift it up do not be afraid say to the towns of juda Here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads he gently leads those that have young. What a wonderful wonderful word it is it was a message and proclamation of peace to the people a proclamation of peace and god says get up from the valleys you may be experiencing a valley valleys in your life you may be feeling that you are in you are in valleys many times we feel that we are in valleys we have valley experiences in our lives but god uh, speaks to those people come on to the top of the mountains god wants to lead these uh, people of juda on to the mountains uh, from the valleys oh that's a wonderful wonderful experience uh, god was going to give to those people and the same experience uh, god wants to give you and me if we feel that we are in valleys of our lives uh, god wants to bring you up uh, onto the top of the mountain get up from the valley to the top of the mountain and the messenger had a good news for you god has a good news for you and the good news is that god was going to defeat babylon if you look into the 52nd chapter chapter 52 of the book of isaiah if you read 7 to 9 verses how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news who proclaims peace who brings glad tidings of good things who proclaims salvation who says to zion your god reigns your watchmen shall lift up their voices with their voices they shall sing together for they shall see eye to eye when the lord brings back zion break forth into joy into joy sing together your waste places of jerusalem for the lord has comforted his people he has redeemed jerusalem what a wonderful wonderful scripture it is god was speaking about defeating babylon god was 
going to defeat Babylon. Babylon might be a mighty power at a particular time. But now, God was speaking that he was going to defeat it with his mighty arm. It is not the people of Judah that were going to defeat Babylon, but God himself, God himself, God himself defeats your enemy. I don't know what is your Babylon in your life. I don't know what is uh, oppressing you. I don't know what is uh, causing uh, discomfort in your life. I don't know what is causing uh, depression and frustration in your life. I don't know what is your Babylon. But uh, God is speaking to you and me that uh, God, was go God is going to defeat our Babylons. Whatever that Babylon may be. God is going to defeat our Babylon. And it was uh, a prophetic word from God. Because uh, it was finally going to be done. In the life of, uh, in, uh, 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 through the life of Jesus Christ. If you look into the book of Luke uh, chapter 4. 18 and 19 verses. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That prophecy was being fulfilled in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. My friend, today... If you accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. And that is the, that will be the beginning of your, of, of your recovery. That, was the, that will be the beginning of your deliverance. That was the beginning of your new experience. That will, that will be the beginning of your revival. That will be the beginning of your transformation. And God is speaking to you, my friend. God is speaking to you. It is a message and proclamation of, of peace. God is a prince of peace. He, he is called the prince of peace. And he is the one who can give you peace. Nobody else can give you peace, my friend. If you search for peace uh, in something else in this world, uh, that peace cannot be permanent in your life. You may find peace in something else. But you may find uh, such a uh, Temporary peace for a few hours. But uh, God is a God who can give you peace forever. And God is uh, promising that peace, peace to you, my friend. And God is uh, speaking to you these four blessings. A proclamation of pardon. Whatever mistakes, whatever sins, whatever negative experiences you have. Uh, God is speaking to you that... Uh, God has a message to you. God has a proclamation to you. That proclamation and message is a proclamation of a pardon. God wants to pardon you. And the second blessing is a proclamation of providence. Whatever rough roads you are going to face. God was, uh, God was speaking about uh, His providence to His people. And God is uh, speaking to you today that uh, He wants to give you such providence. Uh, as you face such rough roads in your life. And God speaks to you about the proclamation of a promise into your life. We have a wonderful promises of God to suit our situations. To suit the, our circumstances of our lives. So, get into the word of God and receive His promises into your heart. And apply those promises to your life. They are alive, my friend. Even today, the promises of God in His Word are so alive. They can revive you. They can give you life. They can resurrect you from the dead state of your life. God is uh, giving a proclamation of promise to you. And God is... Uh, giving a proclamation of peace to you. A pardon, a message of pardon, a message of providence, a message of promise and a message of uh, peace.
Oh, what a wonderful message it is. It was a great message to the people of Judah. And it is a great message to you and to me today. And it was going to be a new beginning to those people. If you want to experience such new beginning in your life, if you want to taste such a transformation in your life, if you want to see such a revival in your life, receive this message. God is a God of uh, proclamation. Proclamation of uh, care and comfort into your life. A proclamation of pardon. God is giving you a proclamation of pardon. A proclamation of providence. A proclamation of promise. A proclamation of peace. Receive these blessings into your life. Into your heart. And be blessed. Be encouraged today. So that you can have a new beginning. A new transformation. A new revival in your life. On receiving these messages. These proclamations into your life. And apply those messages to your heart and life. And be revived. Be encouraged. And be strengthened in your spirits. So that you can be blessed. And so that you can be a blessing to many people through your life. And so that you can bring glory to God through your life. My friend, may this message be a blessing to you. And to your family through you. Thank you. God bless you.